Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of sewing and quilting related things here on YouTube. If you saw my last video, you know that I attempted to quilt my most recent quilt that I'm making. It did not turn out the way that I wanted it to turn out. So I had to switch gears a little bit because we are in the middle of, well, not at the middle, we are near the very end of my quilting basic series and I wanted to, I want to finish this series out. I want to get it done and have all the information out there for you guys. So what I'm doing is I'm setting that quilt aside. That's my cozy picnic quilt. If you're wondering, it's uh, I'm using my, my new pattern that I released called cozy picnic to create that quilt. Yeah, the quilting just did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. So I'm actually setting that quilt aside for now, I'm gonna go back to it and we're gonna figure it out and it's gonna look great. But for right now, I wanted to set it aside so we can continue our quilting basic series. So I left off at the quilting stage of the quilt making process, right? Uh, last week I asked what design you guys would most want to learn. A bunch of you said that you would like to learn the kind of boxy meander quilt design. So that's what we're going to go over today, which I'm super excited about because it is actually the first free motion quilting design that I learned how to do. And I personally think it's the best or one of the best beginner friendly quilting designs that you can do. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. It's super fun, it's super forgiving. So if you're having issues with keeping your line straight, that's totally fine, it doesn't have to be. It's okay if they're a little, you know, a little crooked. It just adds to the design element and it looks really great. It's really fun and I'm just really, really excited to teach you how to do it. Before we jump into that, I want to mention to you that, uh, as you guys know, I am a Missouri Star Quilt Company partner, which means that they give me a discount code for you guys, which is really exciting. They have decided to continue the 20% off discount. Previously, it was just a 15% off discount, which is still a great discount. But last month and now this month, they're doing a 20% off discount for you guys, which is awesome. The only caveat, well, there's a couple caveats. You need to spend at least $50 with them, which I mean, that's kind of easy to do, right? When you're adding things to the cart. And especially if you're shopping for a specific quilt project, it needs to be over $50. And that 20% off does not go towards their the Jenny box or any kind of subscription based box or deal that they do. So just keep that in mind, but pretty much everything else you can use that discount code. And I really, really appreciate everyone that has been using that link. It really, it's really helping me out a lot. And it means a lot to me that you guys trust me and you're using my link. And it just, I'm very happy that I'm in this partnership with Missouri Star Quilt Company. So I just uh, really appreciate you. And I appreciate everyone who's been buying my quilt patterns lately. That's really exciting. I always do like a little happy dance when I get an order in. So thank you all for purchasing my patterns. And yeah, I've, I actually have designed a couple of quilts recently and I'm really excited to get those patterns written and out cause they're really cute and I'm very excited about them. If you can't tell, I love quilting and <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's my passion. I'm just so excited to be able to share it with you guys here on YouTube and I'm just very excited. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this tutorial, okay? We are going to first start with practicing. Practicing is probably the most important step of any kind of quilting design. And I say it all the time. And whenever anyone emails me or asks me advice on trying out free motion quilting with their domestic sewing machine, you all know that I say practice, practice, practice. And practice really does help you uh, gain those motor skills and it helps your brain and your hands kind of get used to the movements and everything. What we're first going to do is we're gonna practice with pen and paper just so you kind of get the feel for what the design is gonna be and kind of how to do it. And I'm gonna give some tips and tricks as I do that. And then if you need to, which I recommend for beginners is to make a practice quilt sandwich and then practice the design on that practice quilt. I would not jump straight from practicing on paper 
to going directly to your quilt project because you don't want to attempt it on your quilt project and then realize like oh no this doesn't look great or something's not quite right or I don't quite understand how where I'm supposed to go and you know it just it can get confusing and it's very frustrating having to seam rip all of those quilting stitches. I'm speaking from experience because I'm gonna have to do that with my with my quilt that I did last week. So yeah so definitely do a quilt sandwich and then after you're done practicing on that quilt sandwich then you get to jump into quilting your quilt and that's what we are going to be going over today. I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll go over how to set up your sewing machine for free motion quilting and I will just be throwing out all the tips and tricks that I've figured out with this design over the years because I've used this many many times for custom quilts and quilts for myself and things and it's just a really really fun way to quilt and I'm excited to show you. So let's head over to my tabletop and we will practice with our pen and paper first. So this is the quilt that we will be quilting. You might recognize it from one of my quilt basting videos from a while back, but I'm gonna set this aside because we don't need that right now. So paper, pen, how do we practice? So this design is very simple. It's like I said, it's very forgiving and it's very fun. <laughs> You're gonna start, let's just imagine this is our quilt right here, right? Usually with this type of quilting, I usually start in the center of the quilt. That just ensures that as you're quilting and as the fabric is naturally kind of shifting and moving a little bit that you're not gonna get weird puckers anywhere. So I usually start in the center somewhere. So let's just do that with our pen. And then I am just going to start drawing a straight line. Hopefully you can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit, move the paper so you can see it. All right, so we got a straight line. Then I'm just going to move over. Then we're going to draw a little rectangular square. Doesn't have to be perfect, just like that. And that basically is what we're doing over the entire quilt top. So you're just gonna move around however you want. You can go to the left instead of the right. You can move down. And we're just gonna fill in any empty spots. See? And then we just continue this. Usually when I'm working on a quilt, I will break the quilt up just in my mind in quadrants. That makes it a little bit easier to focus on one area of the quilt to quilt. So this will be like quadrant one up here in the left hand corner, then quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, something like that. Okay. But, uh, for this quilt, I probably don't really need to do that since it's a baby size quilt, but we're basically just going to be moving around, making our little squares, just like that. And this is very organic feeling. You don't want it to be, well, you might want it to be, but I like it to be very organic. So. I have my squares different sizes, the, my length of my lines, different lengths, and we just kind of move around the quilt top, just filling in any blank spots. But okay, let's say I get to an area, I'm like way, let's, oh, well, I'll do it right here. Okay, so, if you look here, my line, I'm all boxed in. There's no opening where I can go. But you know what? That is totally fine. I can just take my stitching and come down through this stitch line. And it looks like it just goes with the design. No one is going to judge you. There's nothing wrong with it and it just goes along with the design. That's what I mean by this being a very forgiving type of design. 
So let's say if you're doing a regular meander, so you're just doing kind of like this around, that's very ugly, but you're doing kind of a regular meander. It would look a little weird if you got locked in and then you drew your line through, your stitch line through another line of stitches. That would look odd. But with this design, I can just draw that line right through and just continue on going this way. And notice that looks totally normal. Nothing that nothing here looks weird, right? So that's why I say this is a very forgiving design. It's an excellent beginner free motion quilting design. I love it. It's one of my favorites. What I want you to do is just continue practicing this. Practice it with different sizes too. So you can practice if you would rather have larger squares. Let's practice with larger squares, right? And kind of figure out what size you would like on your quilt. And I kind of like to mix up the sizes of the squares just to give it that more organic feel. You can go all the way around like that. This is such a fun, creative way to quilt. See? Like that. And this looks really cool. It looks really modern and very... I just think it looks really cool on a lot of quilts. So that is another size option. So if you don't want to do the little micro squares, you can do larger squares. You can mix them up. That's really fun to do. So once you kind of have a good hang of drawing it for yourself on your paper, then you can move on to your practice quilt. I am gonna skip the practice quilt because I'm very confident in this quilting design. I've done this many, 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 many times. So I'm going to set this aside and we are going to set our sewing machine up for free motion quilting. All right, I am at my sewing machine and it is ready to set up for free motion quilting. So first things first is I would turn my machine off, okay? You don't want to accidentally poke yourself with your needle if you accidentally bump the foot pedal or anything. So when you're removing your feet for your sewing machine, you should go ahead and turn your machine off just for safety reasons, right? So I've just got my regular quarter inch seam allowance foot on right now, so I'm just gonna remove that, put that away so I don't lose it because that would be a huge bummer if I lost that foot. And then I'm gonna attach my free motion quilting foot. So this is a free motion quilting foot. There, it's focusing. That's what it looks like. It attaches, the shaft attaches right here. The screw goes through this hole. Oops, just like that. And this is the foot part that goes over the fabric. My goodness, I'm having a hard time focusing. And then there's this little spring action in here that helps with the tension of your stitches. I'm just going to attach this. Every sewing machine is going to be a little bit different probably. So if you have questions on your specific sewing machine for how to attach your foot, you should uh, look at your manual that came with your sewing machine. I'm going to tighten that up. We're not going to tighten it super tight. There's just no reason to tighten that screw super tight. You just want it tight enough so it's not going to come undone, right? Because you don't want to make it harder on yourself to undo later on. So our next step for setting up for free motion quilting is I come over to my stitch length dial and I move it all the way down to zero. That allows me to be in complete control of my stitch length. So that is very important. All right, I am also going to lower my feed dogs. You know our feed dogs? So my machine has a little lever here that I just push and now my feed dogs are down. If your machine does not allow you to lower your feed dogs, it probably came with a cover that can cover up the feed dogs and does the same thing. My old Singer machine that I used before I got this had that. So I would just put this little plastic cover over the feed dogs and it worked just fine. That's what I did. And then I'm also gonna turn my speed down a little bit cause I do not 
stitch as fast when I'm free motion quilting as when I am just piecing blocks together, okay? So that is all set up. I've got a full bobbin of thread in my bobbin already. I've got my thread of choice for my quilting. The thread that I like to use and I recommend for for quilting is Coates and Clark's Machine Quilting 100% Cotton Thread. It is my favorite thread. I will link it for you guys. So if you want to get some, you certainly can use my link. I would really appreciate it, but I really do love this thread. I've used it for years. It's my go-to. I have it in a bunch of different colors and it's what I use for everything. I use it for piecing and I use it for quilting and binding. So it's my favorite thread and it's not expensive. You don't, you do not have to use expensive thread to make a beautiful quilt. <laughs> I'll shout it from the rooftop. All right, so I have my machine all set up. So now it is time to quilt. So I'm gonna move the camera. Let's see, what do I wanna do here? Why didn't you guys tell me the camera was crooked? <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too big of a bummer for that part. We'll try this angle and we'll see what it looks like. So I've got my quilt here. All right, and I'm actually gonna start my stitches in the ditch for my quilting. So we won't be able to see it. Might help if I turn my machine on. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down. Definitely make sure when you are free motion quilting and using a free motion quilting foot, make sure that you lower the foot because that helps with the tension. If you forget to do that, which I have done so many times, I don't do it anymore because I would just make myself so mad when I would do it. <laughs> but if you don't do that, then it completely screws up the tension on the back of the quilt, and then you have to take all those stitches out. So just doubly make sure that you put your foot down when you're going to start stitching, all right? <laughs> little, that was a little tip thrown in there for you. <laughs> so I am just going to do a few stitches forward and a few stitches back to back stitch and then I'll be able I'll be ready to actually quilt. All right. Now we are ready to quilt. I am just going to work my way probably over to the bottom left hand side just cuz I feel like that's naturally going to be the way that I am going to gravitate towards. Here we go. When you, if you need to stop, um, if you need to adjust the quilt or anything, please completely stop pushing your presser foot. Don't think that you can move it while the needle is still going because what happens is on the back, you're gonna get this little wad of thread, which is, it just doesn't look great. I mean, it, it really doesn't affect the quilt at all. It just doesn't doesn't look the best. That's another thing I had to learn the hard way. So I'm just gonna keep stitching here. If you notice, I am going, I am going pretty slow just because this is a tutorial. I want to make sure that you understand what I'm doing and everything. A big thing, and this is what you're going to figure out. Hold on a second. A big thing that you are going to figure out when you are doing your, your practice quilt is you're going to figure out your speed and what works for you. So if you notice someone on YouTube or Instagram or wherever you watch content and you see them quilting and they look like they're going really fast, they could actually be going really fast or they could have the video sped up a little bit, but I don't want that to discourage you and make you think that you're doing something wrong or you're not as good as that other person quilting because number one, they've probably been doing it for a really long time. And number two, they're not showing you their mess ups. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it is best to go slow when you are first learning how to do different free motion quilting designs because it's really easy to for things to get out of hand <laughs> and just to kind of lose control and it not turn out the way that you want it to. So 
just take it really slow and you will you will figure out the speed that you want to go and the the there's two things working simultaneously here when you're free motion quilting because you lowered those feed dogs your hands are in complete control of what that fabric is doing under the needle so what I like to do when I free motion quilt is I put my hands about like that around the needle and I guide the fabric using my hands. If you want to, you can use quilting gloves for that. That They kind of have like a little bit of grip to them and they make it a little bit easier to quilt. I actually have a pair <laughs> underneath my machine that I keep. Um, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of wearing them for a long time because my hands get sweaty, okay? I'm just gonna be 100% honest. <laughs> My hands get sweaty and it's it's uncomfortable so I'm not a big fan so I've kind of figured out how to make it work for me with just using my chubby little fingers yeah but if you want to use the gloves go ahead that's totally fine they do work they do help they help grip the fabric and allow you to move the fabric around a little bit easier the other thing that you are complete in, in complete control of and that you need to be working with is the speed of the needle so that's why I turned my speed down. So you are in control of the needle speed and you want your needle speed and the speed in which you're moving the fabric to work in tandem. And that's going to help get a really consistent stitch length. And this is gonna take practice. It is going to take practice to get that looking really good. So it took me many quilts to get to be able to do even stitching and even sometimes now mine isn't perfect and I'm okay with that okay because perfect isn't the goal when I'm quilting I want it to look good but perfection is not the goal but just know that it is going to take some practice but you can do it you really can I think anybody can free motion quilt it just takes the practice if you can set aside that time to give some really good practice in uh, I think you can do it all right, so let's get back to the quilting, all right? <laughs> can see the stitching see how the squares or rectangles are not the same size not all the lines are perfectly straight and I love it and I also I forgot to mention this but this gives the quilt a really cool texture and I love the way that it feels especially after you wash the quilt because it gives it gets a little bit of a quilt crinkle and it just feels really great so we've got a little bit more here I am gonna try to set the camera up to a different angle so you can see a little bit better while I'm working. And I'm just gonna keep on stitching away. <laughs> a good little chunk here quilted as you can see going down into the corner <laughs> if I can show it how cute is this quilting oh my goodness and it feels really cool so if you look closely my squares are different sizes some of my lines are not straight see this is a little angled here and it works it goes it's very organic it looks intentional right? I mean, this looks really cool. I think it looks great. I am just going to continue quilting this. I came down here to the corner and I just ran my stitches off 
out into the batting. And that's how I finish off if I hit a corner and I'm done. What you can do to continue your stitches is you can hop on over a little ways from where you uh, ran off and jump back in and continue creating the design. Or you can come back up anywhere where you were stitching and just stitch right in that stitch. Back stitch a little bit so your stitches don't come out and just continue going. That's why I think this is a, a fantastic beginner friendly quilting design because you, there's, you cannot do this wrong. You can't, it's not possible <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. As long as you kind of get the technique down, I, the design portion of it, I don't think you can do wrong. So let me show you what it looks like on the back. My back is a little busy, so you might not be able to see it. Oh goodness, yeah, it's really hard to see. The stitches look beautiful and even on the back, and this backing is actually flannel, and the texture that I'm getting with those stitches feels so cool. I really like that. That's gonna be so snuggly and wonderful. I am just going to continue quilting this. If you have any questions, Leave it down in the comments below, please, and I am happy to answer them. I could do a follow-up video if it's needed, but I think this uh, quilting design is very self-explanatory. So I'm going to continue quilting this, and then uh, when I'm done, I will do a grand reveal and show you what it looks like, and we will wrap it up. So let's continue quilting. Well, my bobbin just ran out. So I wanted to show you what I do when that happens with this specific quilting design. So since we're dealing with a bunch of straight little lines all over the quilt top anyways, I am just gonna go to where my bobbin ended, which is right here. It's very hard for you to see because the light from the machine is shining right on it, but this is right where it ended. So I am going to take my needle and I'm gonna line it up right with where it ended. And I am just going to do a few stitches forward and a few stitches back to back stitch to hold all of those stitches in place. And then I'm just gonna continue stitching like normal. So let me go ahead and do that here. Now my stitches are back stitched, they're held in place and now I can continue my quilting. quilting here. Let's check it out, shall we? I am, hold on a second here. <laughs> I got the quilting about halfway done. So let's check it out, shall we? Here is the quilting here. Isn't this so fun? I love the movement of it and it's very fun. It's fun to do and it's just fun to look at. And it uh, it gives a really nice texture, as I said, to the quilt top. It feels really good. Kids really love this texture. So yeah, and really you can do it as dense or as widespread as you want. I like it a little bit more dense because I just like the look of it and the feel of it a little bit better when the stitches are a little bit closer together. But like when we practiced on our paper, you can have the squares be larger and there be more space between them, you know? So it's, this is such a fantastic quilting design that can be used for, in so many different applications. You can do it as an all over design like I'm doing on this quilt. You could do it as a filler for 
different parts of a quilt. It's there's just so many different ways that you could use it and I just really really love it. I keep saying it's very forgiving. You can't you can't really get get trapped with it. You know how sometimes that's kind of the fear especially for beginner quilters is with free motion quilting you feel like you get trapped in an area and with this you you, you really can't because you can just go through any of the lines and it just looks like that's what the design was supposed to look like so i am going to put this on the table and then do like a little close-up for you guys here's a really nice close-up of the stitching. You can see all of my squares and rectangles are completely <laughs> different sizes. But my stitch length is pretty consistent and that's just from practice and you can do that too. I really love this little swan block. I think this looks really good. And yeah, it just adds a really nice texture to our quilt. So there we have it. Pretty cool, huh? I really hope you give this quilting technique a try. It's so much fun to do. I'm just, just sitting doing it. It reminded me of how much I loved this design. It's just so, so much fun to do on a quilt. So thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I hope you learned something. I hope you give this quilting design a try, really. It's so much fun to do and it's a lot easier than it looks. As I hope you learned in this video and I really hope you give it a try really don't forget to use that link from Missouri Star Quilt Company if you would like to support the channel and get yourself a 20% off discount just remember your total does need to be over $50 yeah just thank you so much for all of your support oh my goodness I got so many kind messages from people about my last video when I did <laughs> kind of a whoopsie with my quilting and everyone has been just so nice and I really, really appreciate all the advice and just kind words that you guys have given me. It, it means a lot and I really, really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to taking another stab at that quilt. So uh, I will do it. <laughs> you will be seeing me work on that. Uh, so uh, just thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day guys and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.